What's going on YouTube? So today we're gonna to be talking TIG welders. In front of me I have a Miller Diversion 180. It's a 180 amp uh, multi-purpose TIG welder. It does stainless steel, titanium, aluminum. So a lot of options there. And it's more tailored towards beginner welders like I am. I'm kind of a hobbyist and just wanna get into the TIG welding world. Don't have a lot of experience. And I think this is a really good option for guys like me. The main reason I bought this welder is to kind of fabricate some aluminum components, kind of like a catch can. I'll show you I have one on the Super here. That would be relatively easy to fab at home if you had the equipment. And I really want to get into stainless steel exhaust. So here's a good example of that catch can. Relatively easy to make, just time consuming. If you guys are paying fabricators to make something like that, you know they're expensive. And then kind of stainless steel, exhaust, plumbing, things like that. Another couple good examples here. Aluminum intercooler piping. That's a really common one for car guys. And like this intake doesn't fit that well. I'm gonna try and add another pie cut to this. Just clean things up and Things that I want to do at home, and this is going to give me a lot more freedom, and I'm going to save money in the long run. So Miller is known for being a really good quality welder. I picked this one up used for around that $2,000, $2,500 mark. I've seen a couple up in that price range now. And for that price, I think it's a really good deal. If you're buying one new, you're probably going to be spending closer to five grand but there are a lot cheaper alternatives out there as well, even if you do wanna buy new. Just one other thing to note, if you guys are buying used, you do need Argon. So these tanks are not cheap. I would budget another 400 bucks, 500 bucks on the high end to add a tank if your welder's not gonna come with a tank. There are rental companies out there as well for a different option if you guys like that, but I like owning my stuff. I plan on keeping this welder long term, so buying it was just a no-brainer for me. So what you get with this welder? The thing I like the most? Simplicity. The whole theme of this welder is just being simple to use, basically for people starting out. You got your torch, you got a pedal, and the controls are basically a no-brainer. You pick AC or DC, if you're welding aluminum or stainless titanium, stuff like that, all the cool stuff, uh, your amperage. Everything feels good quality too, like these knobs and the buttons and everything. You can tell this is a high-end welder for what it is. And this thickness chart is really helpful and surprisingly accurate. What I do, same welding 1 8 aluminum. I err on the high side of the chart and then I use the pedal to taper down the amperage a little bit if needed, and it works really well. So with this welder, you're not messing with different wavelengths and post flow, all that kind of stuff that can get overwhelming when you're starting, for me anyways. The higher your amperage and the hotter that your tungsten's gonna get, the more post flow you'll get automatically just to help cool down your tungsten and not damage anything and your weld surface as well. So you don't have to think about anything. It's very nice. I think the post flow does air a little bit on the long side. So if you did have another machine, you could save a little bit of argon by dialing that back just a little bit. But I don't really think that's a downside. For beginners, that automatic post flow is a very nice feature. The torch is gas cooled, so it does get a little hot if you're running higher amperage for longer periods of time. A liquid cooled torch would probably be a nice upgrade, but I don't think those are cheap. For the recreational guy, this does just fine. Uh, the cooling fan and everything in this unit is all automatic as well. When you start welding, it kind of cycles on and off as needed. You can hear it there cycle, just to give you an idea. The welder is extremely light if you need to pack it around anywhere. So you don't have any filler rod or anything in there. Obviously your rod and everything is separate as you're gonna be dabbing that in with your other hand. So like I said, I have zero 
absolutely no TIG experience. And these are my first couple of welds that I've tried. And you can see they are horrible. There is a ton of contamination in there. Um, they're just not good. And I kind of figured out what I was doing wrong. My gas flow was way too high. And I think I was just pulling contamination in just from how turbulent the gas flow was. Because I kind of played around with some settings and almost right away started stacking not bad dimes. And pretty much as soon as I got the settings figured out, uh, yeah, just kept on getting better and better. Like look at some of these, started playing around with uh, just different styles of welds. And yeah, almost no experience. And aluminum is a fairly tricky material to get the hang of, but super happy with it so far. To get to this point, like something like that, I would say maybe four hours of runtime with the machine. Every time I use the machine, it just gets a little bit better, a little bit better. So some of these welds still have a little bit of contamination, stuff like that, but other ones are getting really pretty good for only four hours or so of practice with this machine. For somebody that's never TIG welded, there's a lot of variables like the pedal and feeding rod with one hand and torch in the other. It does take getting used to just those three variables in general, rather than say just a MIG welder where you just hammer down and don't have to think about much. Gas settings. So this is what I was running when I started to get my proper beads with no contamination. At first, I was running upwards of 25, 30. And yeah, I was just pulling in so much contamination into the weld. It didn't even look like a weld. So hopefully that gives you a rough idea of where you should set your machine up if you're just starting with aluminum. I haven't had the chance to play around with stainless at all yet. So the settings will probably be a little bit different for that. But stainless scrap is a little harder to find, so. Still working on it. But enough talk. Let's uh, put this welder to the test. I have a real world aluminum weld crack. I'll show you guys and I'm gonna try and repair it. Let's see how I can do. So at the back of my sled deck here, we have a crack in this weld on the bottom of my ramp where it drags on the ground. Let's try and get her patched up. All right, so we got her in the garage. You can see a pretty nasty crack, decent sized gap. I might be able to squeeze this a little bit closer together, but we got our work cut out for us. For a hobby welder like myself, let's see how it goes. So we have the weld surface cleaned up a little bit and I managed to close the gap a little bit, but still a decent sized gap. Let's start filling. All right, let's check it out. Definitely not my best work. I was going really heavy with the filler rod, but it, uh, it is fixed. So that kind of gives you an example of real world, what you can expect out of a welder like this with virtually no experience. So it's not the prettiest thing, but it definitely gets the job done. Obviously human error and me being the operator is the biggest variable. The welder is more than capable. This was literally the first thing I've ever tried to actually fix. And I'll admit it's a little bit harder with uh, angles like this and kind of real world welding rather than just on a piece of scrap aluminum. But I'm not mad with how it turned out. I could go over it again, but really, I don't care. It's just the bottom of the ramp. Nobody's going to see it anyway. And it doesn't hold a lot of weight or anything like that. Not a ton of stress on that joint. So 
So quick summary, this is a great welder. Uh, it's more than capable of doing any project that I would take on. You can get versions a little bit bigger. I know they make it 200 amp and probably some other options as well. But for me at home, I don't think I would ever push this to the limit at 180 amps. Like I was using 110, 115 on this project I currently just did today. And to quickly name one thing I don't like about this machine would be no pulse setting. So it is nice not having a ton of buttons and switches on the front, but I really wish they would have added a pulse setting. That's one feature that I think would be useful on really thin material. If you can find one for 2000, 2500 bucks in that price range, I say go for it. You're not gonna find a better quality unit for the price, in my opinion. And just the ease of use, uh, for me learning, it just makes things simple. Less variables, less things to mess around with, less settings, and more time welding and practicing. So that's what it's all about. I probably should have practiced a little bit more before taking on this ramp, but it's not really a super important piece, so I just wanted to tackle it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and got some value out of this, and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.